Hey everyone, we're here in the Pixelcore studio in San Rafael, California, and we're checking out Final Cut Pro and the pips. And the pips. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, pip being picture in picture. Picture in picture, yeah. You yeah. want to show us some really cool picture in picture effects. Yeah. We've been exploring various things you can do with Final Cut related to effects. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a huge motion fan, but there's a great deal you can do uh, basically doing motion graphics directly mm -hmm. inside Final Cut Pro. And I wanted to give another example of a practical way of doing that. So to start with, I have this clip on the primary storyline of a panorama shot, uh, just shot with an iPhone of um, close to where you live in, in Prescott, Arizona. And before I do my picture in picture, I just want to notice by default, because it's a panorama, it doesn't really match the frame. I've got a 1920-1080 frame here in this panorama, so it's letterboxed. And if you didn't already know, in the video inspector at the bottom, there are some spatial conform options, which is fit by default. And we've talked about some of this. I'm not going to go in great detail here, detail here, but I just want to show you that if I select, I'm going to select the transform tool so we can see the bounding box around it. Let me just switch to transform. And we see that bounding box of how much I have in here now. Uh, I'm going to reset it to make sure it looks like the default. There we go. go. There so go. by default, it'll, it yeah, it'll fit, just fit in the frame there. Um, but my other option is to fill and to really see what's going on there. If I command minus to zoom out, we can see that it completely fills. There's no black. There's no letterbox or pillar boxing, but we're, of course, missing parts of the image now. Uh, or we can choose none, which makes it the regular full size of the image. So we can see that this image is much bigger than 1920 by 1080. Mm -hmm. And we can just see a piece. And that allows us, of course, to position it wherever we want uh, to do. Now, what I want to do here, I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to go back to fit uh, and then shift Z to fit my canvas back to the window here and fit. And then what I'm just going to do is scale it up just a little bit because I want it a little bit larger. I'm just using the scale parameter. I want something a little beyond fit, but not quite all the way to fill, something like that and maybe that part of it. Yeah, nice uh, composition there. So yeah, just a little, I like it too, I like it too. So what I'm gonna do, here's my goal is, uh, I have a disabled clip on the top, which I'll press V to enable, and I have this shot of this butterfly that was uh, shot on your property, or it's actually it's a moth. That's a moth. Um, but it's indigenous to this area, and so this is a piece that's talking about, uh, you know, flora and fauna that are indigenous to the Arizona, um, Environment. Area, environment, yeah. thank you. So this particular guy, I don't really like this background. <laughs> what on is, his, what is that? It's on a sandal. Oh, it's on a sandal. <laughs> it's on right. a sandal, yeah. It's right outside yeah. our edit bay, actually. Yeah. So there's a, um, I, I've added a draw mask, and we've covered them before, so I'm not going to talk about it, but I'll enable this draw mask, and I'll just select oh, it so we can see. Good job. Uh, well, that's what I love <laughs> about Final Cut wow. is, is that you can draw mask, very detailed mask around objects. It's a very and, detailed mask. Yeah, so I just wanted to see that, that we've got this nice, I, um, isolated object now. So with that done, I really want to focus on transformations here. So transformations in the video inspector, we've got um, spatial conform at the bottom that we just talked about, and then we've got transformation crop and distort. Now I'm going to focus on transform. So I want to change its position and rotation and scale, but instead of doing it here, I'd like to do it in the in the viewer. So one way is to select uh, this little transform icon here, but I can also in the inspector, I can click right here to select it or Shift-T will select it. And I like to do this with the inspector open because sometimes I like to use controls in the inspector. The hot scrubbers. The scrubber, hot scrubbers in the inspector. But in this time, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna scale this guy down and oh, I'm really gonna good. move him. I'm gonna take advantage of this little black area to kind of break the, you know, the, the edge of the barrier. I think it looks nicely. Yeah. I think it looks nice. And then I'm gonna drag this way out so I can carefully straighten him out. I'm just put him up in the corner there. So something like that. So that's where I want him um, as I'm talking about, you know, this Indigenous particular life. Yeah, this this moth yeah. in, in in Prescott, Arizona. Now, uh, <laughs> that's great. I think it looks really cool, but I don't want him just popping on the screen like that. I like to animate him on. Right. So I'm not going to use keyframes though for that. What You're I'm going to do? Motion blur. <laughs> I'm not going to use motion blur either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use a transition. Right. And part of the reason is to show you how cool it is to create animation with transitions, but I also want to show you a really cool trick. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the movements category here and there's a few transitions that will work on this. Now, normally transitions go from one clip to another. Sure. So they animate both of them. Sure. We only want to animate one clip here. So many transitions won't work by default, but a few of them will. And a couple that I think are really useful are in the movements category, specifically scale. So what I'll do is I'll just drag scale on top of the whole thing so it gets applied to both sides. 
And if I play that now, uh, that just scales up onto the screen very nicely. Right. But when I get to the end, something funky happens. Yeah. You, right? want, you want them to scale down, don't you? Right, so all I need to do is select the outgoing one and for the direction instead of up, I can choose down or out and it'll scale it'll scale the, the moth instead of the background. Nice. Okay, so that's you just need to swap them. Um, another one that works really well with this is slide. So I'll replace these each with slide. Nice. And now we have him sliding, sliding in. in. Hangs yeah. out a little while as we talk about him. And then, oh, that's not what we want. But if we go back up to the transition, selecting it first, instead of slide in, we can say slide out. And you can also choose a direction. Oh, I, there's motion blur. Yeah, in this case, there's motion blur. Isn't that a good? What the you, heck? You know why? Because that's just a motion project. The transition is a motion oh, project. That's why. Yeah. See, so I I'll, noticed that straight away. You did. So you watched last week's episode, um, assuming it's last week's episode. So now he slides in, hangs out, and slides out. So that's all great and lovely. But what about this? If I go to the blur category and I add radial blur, I'm going to scrub over this. But you just replaced the transition though, didn't you? I did. I replaced yeah. the one I was using with right. radial blur. Right. But radial blur is blurring the underlying video and then blurring the moth. Oh, I, I don't see. want it's, that. No, right. So there are a bunch of transitions that will force you to um, animate the what's essentially the outgoing clip here. And that's not what I want. Okay, so there's a way to handle this, and this is really cool. And this, this tip actually comes from, let me get his name right here, uh, Ben Halsall, benhalsall.com, Ben, H-A-L-S-A-L-L.com. He came up with a, what I thought was a brilliant way of handling this that allows you to use any of the transitions. Um, and just to repeat, those couple, scale and slide, work as they are, and all the wipes will work. But none of the other ones will work. They'll all do this. Right. But here's the solution. Check this out. So I know I wanted to, I wanted to animate starting about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the transition completely, and I'm going to hit Command B to blade this clip. We're basically going to trick it into thinking that there is an incoming clip. Okay. Ah. And this is gonna be the incoming clip. And the trick is to, to first to blade it and then take this incoming clip and set its opacity to zero, okay? Disabling it won't work. Hitting the V can won't work. You have to, you actually have to set its opacity to zero. Now, if I set this radial transition on here, it, it we don't see anything happening at the beginning, but it's actually animating that zero, zero opacity right, thing. Zero opacity. And, then, and it, then, then it blurs This guy up. comes on, yeah. Now, let me, this particular, um, let me turn off the transform controls. It has the on-screen control to just determine where that radial happens. So let me put, move that little radial center to the middle of the butterfly. Moth. And now, <laughs> just that butterfly animates on and nothing else. Yeah. Okay? So kind of a funky thing, but we're tricking Final Cut into thinking that it's animating the, the incoming animation. But it allows us to create animation using any of the transitions in the transitions browser. Not just limited to those few that you showed us. Yes, exactly. It just that's lets you a, use that's everything. That's actually your, that's a, that's a good ending to the I, movie. I think it's a useful thing. Yes. It's a useful way. So just some ideas about using, um, creating motion graphics by using masks, transformations, and then uh, using transitions to create animation. I, that looks really, really cool. Yeah, it looks kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it almost like looks it. like he's flying. All right. bit. Excellent, excellent. Um, this isn't part of your tutorial. This is just something that... Um, no, this is a little... A lot of this stuff is covered in the Warp Speed um, effects okay. tutorial. Right. But this particular thing about transitions uh, is new. It's new. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. I didn't know that. Well, if you ever need to animate a large moth, you will know... <laughs> or, text, or text. Or text or animation. Text or anything, yeah. Yeah, anytime you want to yeah. make text, you can use transitions. Any, or that, and particularly with anything with an alpha channel, as you do right. down here. So... Uh, Check us out on Twitter and uh, all of our, our growing library of free tutorials on YouTube. Uh, Mark has some excellent motion training. And uh, let's see what else. I think, I think that's yeah. pretty much everywhere, right? So we want to thank you again for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. Join us next week.